Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus said, Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Thus far our text. Our Lord Jesus loves to teach with pictures. Now, may he, he probably didn't have a picture book handy, um, nor do we know if he's actually standing by a vine or near a vineyard as he's speaking these words. But the imagery was common, especially in his day in ancient Israel. <laughs> Vineyards were something everyone could relate to then, much like we can relate to cornfields and cows here in southeast Minnesota. When I was a kid, we had a great climbing tree in the front yard. It was one of these red maples that uh, was a wide, leafy uh, tree. And the, the great thing about it was that the leaves were all around the outside. There was nothing really in the middle, nothing but branches as you stood under the tree. And you could see all sorts of pathways up and down. And it was a great tree to climb. You could pick just about a different path every time you went. Now, as I got older and bigger and stronger, you could try some of those harder paths, you know, pulling yourself up by some of the branches that couldn't reach when you were a little smaller. But of course, you also had to watch out for the dead branches that maybe could support you when you were a little smaller and younger, but now bigger but they were likely to snap. And I remember a few of those times, kind of dangling <laughs> by a branch, trying to find something else to step onto. Jesus says, our Heavenly Father is our vine dresser. He is the one that shapes us, pushes us, guides us, the paths to be on. He's the one removing dead branches and even pruning good ones to make sure that they grow in the right way, growing in faith, hope, and love in Jesus. For Jesus is the true vine, and we are but the branches. We must abide in Him. Abide means to, to stay, to remain, to be connected to. For to be outside of Jesus is to be a dead branch. There is no life, there is no hope, there is no way to make yourself become alive. That's how we're conceived, that's how we're born into this world. That's how God sees all those who do not believe in Him, nothing but dead sticks. Kindling, if you will, for the fire of hell. So it's only by the grace of God, delivered through His Word, through the Word made flesh in Jesus Christ, that we can have life. For Christ is the vine. He contains all that beautiful nourishment, that life-giving sap that flows into us to feed us and strengthen us and grow us to be bigger branches connected to the vine. He gives us the new birth through holy baptism, crafting a little shoot into himself, the vine. Faith is like that. It starts small. It's tender. It's easily damaged. And so it's, it has to be nurtured and protected and constantly fed in order to grow and produce fruit. Fruit that is, first and foremost, more faith, stronger faith. For it is faith that takes in Jesus, that takes in the life that we so desperately need, takes in his words, and by doing so, Jesus tells us that we abide in him, we stay connected to him. Faith takes in Jesus as we consume his body and blood in the Holy Supper that he instituted on that night when he was betrayed. Faith sees Jesus cut off from his own Father as he suffered on the cross, gave up his life. 
Jesus becomes a dead branch for all our wretched sins. He is like a mighty tree that is cut down with only a stump remaining. Yeah, the tree withers and dries out and or eventually is burned or, or rots away. But the stump remains and the stump abides in life. And it doesn't take long for new shoots to appear. The resurrection of Jesus is the promise that life after death is not only possible, it's absolutely certain. It's going to happen. But only if you abide in Jesus. Only if by grace through faith you are connected to that stump, stump of Jesse, if you will, that is Christ, from which Jesus rises to become the true vine of life that reaches the throne of God. Only when you have received the life that flows from the vine can you be a disciple of Jesus and bear much fruit. Those fruits of faith. Fruits of the Spirit that we sang a little bit about. Fruits that come from being nourished well and often. Fruits that are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, Goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. I hope you've seen those fruits in your lives. But I know for me personally, I wish I could see a lot more. In myself, that is. And, and yes, as your pastor, fruits in you as well. It's far more easier to see the dead works in people's lives than the fruits that God is providing. It's far easier to see the sins, the bad habits, the unfaithfulness, than it is to see the true growth. Growth that was often hidden, but God knows where it's going. And so we must pray. We must ask our Father in heaven to prune us. Now it's not always a pleasant thought, it's not always something that comes easily to us to cut the sins and bad habits out of our lives so that Jesus can provide more strength, more nourishment, more fruit. Jesus says, abide in me and my words abide in you and ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. And it is God's will to shape us, prune us, trim us, to guide us in the way that we should go. Whatever we, Jesus is talking about God's will for us, that God will be glorified among all the dead branches in the world around us. God's will is that no one would die, but, all, but that all would be grafted into the true vine of Jesus to receive true life. Life that can only come from God life that goes on forever in the joys of heaven life in the true vine God's will is to save you and me from the place where all those dead branches will be thrown one day God's will is to cut out the things that would weigh you down in this world things like sin and guilt and shame things that take you away from where you are truly fed with Christ Ever had someone say, or maybe even said it yourself, that you don't need to be in church every Sunday to be good with God? Ever heard or said that being out on the lake, being in the tractor, being in bed on Sunday morning is just as good as being in church, as being with God? To those who believe that, God says, repent. And listen to the snip. Listen to the sear, the, the, the shears, the snipping shears coming at you. To cut away that false belief. To cut away the ungodliness that so easily grows in our lives. Being in creation, tending to it, resting in it, are blessings of God to be sure, but they are not where God provides His fruit. It's not where God provides life. 
You're not receiving the life-giving sap of your Lord Jesus when you are apart from His Word. The Word that proclaims to you Christ and Him crucified for the forgiveness of your sins. The Word that announces that He is risen, that new life awaits all those who are in Him. The word that tells us that he has conquered sin and death in the grave. The word that tells you you are forgiven because of Jesus. Faith in Jesus. And the sacrifice that he made to give you life in himself, the vine. And so, dear people of God, abide in Jesus. Listen to him. Cherish and delight in his word. Wrestle with the, that word when it's hard to understand. Study it, hear it, consume it as you eat and drink a foretaste of the feast to come in his supper. Abide in Jesus. Don't cut yourself off from the life-giving blood of Jesus that comes in word and sacrament because faith does eventually wither and die when it's removed from its source. And the Father will have no choice but to cut you off and throw you into the fire. So abide in Jesus. Believe in Him. And fruit will follow. Fruits of faith and forgiveness. Fruits of comfort and encouragement. Knowing that we are simply branches connected to Christ who is the vine. He is the one responsible for our life and for our salvation. He is the one that gives us the support we need. Every time we need it. Apart from him, we have no good in us. Jesus says, I am the vine, you are the branches. Abide in Jesus, and listen to his word. Know that the Father prunes and shapes you so that you stay on the path that is chosen for you. The path that leads to heaven. For Jesus' sake, amen. And now the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord.